Nelson, can I ask one question? Yes, sir. Um, on the policies, are they all not uh, personal? Not, not a, uh, are they all with one company, two companies? Uh, let's see. There's uh, some estate farm. There's uh, one uh, one in New York life. Uh, there's a number of uh, with the AXA. Uh, and uh, there's a number of with Guardian. Yeah. Okay. Now, we started out, uh, I, I told you we got to the point where we own 49 policies. Yeah. But uh, we've given away uh, down to the point where we only have uh, 24 policies. <laughs> yeah. This is a great way to transfer wealth from one generation to another on a very great tax favorable basis. Yeah. But uh, you see, the, the good part of all this is it teaches people to think intergenerationally. Well, tell me what's happened to the family in uh, your country and ours in the last uh, 100 years. Let's just say the last 50 years. Yeah. Well, what's the answer? And you get down to the heart of it, it, it has to do with money. Yeah. See, uh, Ben Hayden is a great preacher in uh, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, he's a couple years older than I am. But uh, uh, anyway, Mary and I threw money at his outfit many, many years, and we uh, always got two sermons in the mail every week. I remember one very well. He says, uh, in my generation and his, that the subject that was uh, taboo among family members was sex. He says, now it's money. They talk about anything in the world within a family, but they can't keep them flying. Uh, hey, keep the pointy end forward. Keep the pointy end forward. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sorry, I got plenty of like, no. pretty bad. So. No. Yeah, don't mess it up. <laughs> Have the same number of landings and takeoffs. <laughs> 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 Just know where B1 is. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I have a question. Yes. You had a question? I was always asked by uh, advisors. Why don't you step, Nelson? This is an yeah. equitable life assurance of the U.S. Yes. And we are equitable life of the U.S. That has no connection at all. No. And then somebody showed me the picture of equitable life of Brit British. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's total difference. Yeah. So it's just happened to, yeah. to have the same name. Right? True. Yeah. That's an equitable violence, all that kind of stuff. Oh, but okay. but uh, okay. when so the guy started out. Is the equitable life of U.S. is still a neutral company? Uh, unfortunately, no. Oh. Uh, you see, this was the brilliance of the Harvard MBAs that I was telling you about uh, that uh, I tangled with. If, they want to become a stock company again. Oh. And so uh, uh, they say we can manage more capital uh, oh. if we, we, we do that and so forth. We can attract more capital. Well, uh, th that kind of thinking came straight out of the Harvard MBA syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they ruined a real good company. AXA had to buy them out. AXA out of France. Uh, okay, when we pay a premium uh, on those quote, equitable policies, mm. it's made to AXA. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So if a life insurance policy was uh, set up using the IPC concept with a mutual company, mm. and then uh, all of a sudden, after 20 years, the company demutualized. Yes, so but they still, pay, still, they still pay dividends. Yeah, they just close that and block again, of part see, of business. What, uh, I'm trying to get across, and I mentioned, is that how you behave mm -hmm. is much more important than how the insurance company behaves. Mm -hmm. You see, when I showed you the activity of that state farm policy, mm -hmm. I showed you how, what the insurance company did, mm -hmm. but what is not seen is what I did with the policy. Mm -hmm. I made three very good investments. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't show up here. That's what banking is about. Banking is uh, uh, having the access to read resources when you find the opportunity that you know something about. Unique knowledge about. And everybody runs into that sort of stuff, but they don't have the, the resources to do something about it. Coupled with the fact they do some stupid things like, uh, uh, okay, 
Joe Pantosi was telling me uh, just uh, the other day on the phone about uh, someone uh, in uh, a, who was a pastor of a church. And the guy uh, paid $65,000 for a course to learn how to flip houses. He says, that, did he make a policy loan to do so? No, he went to the bank and got the money. Oh, my God. Pray for us. <laughs> Sometimes it looks hopeless, but it's not. <laughs> yes, Daryl. Hopefully it's not that, that question. Right? Yes. It's kind of going back to what Jason was saying, like, illustration one and two, how when you do financing, the policy grows. I just, I'm not quite seeing the logic behind it. I don't know if we can structure equivalent policies, for example, to be able to get the EDOs. Okay, quit thinking about a policy. Quit thinking about a policy. Right. Think about an aggregation of policies. A system. See, I showed you two businesses to get your mind adjusted. To start off with, I showed you the grocery store business. Then I showed you Bank of America, didn't I? And then I asked the question of you, uh, how many branch offices does Bank of America have? Lots. Lots. Yeah, don't ask the president of the company, he doesn't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> how many uh, stores does Walmart have? Lots, all of them. Well, it started out with one store in Bentonville, Arkansas. Why did they do this? Now, uh, have y'all seen that uh, 25 richest families uh, in the U.S. is in Forbes magazine here recently? <laughs> The Walton family is far and away above the Coke family. Still there. Yeah, the Rockefellers is number 23 out of 25. <laughs> yes. Now, how'd they do that? Proliferation of policy, uh, of uh, stores. <clears throat> Branch office of the bank. Proliferation. Well, like I told you, we own 49 policies at one time. Don't think about a policy and how it is structured so <coughs> Just think of these principles and that is all. Now this is not all going to jail in your mind immediately, no more than that bicycle uh, back there jailed in his mind immediately. It's, it's going to take place over time, is it, Glenn? That's right. And see, so these guys have been around long enough uh, at this that they understand this perfectly. Yeah, I can take off. Like, even for my family, I have seven policies. Mm -hmm. Cost yeah. my family, but I, you know, even if I want to implement this, I just, um, I've only taken one policy one. But, uh, you know, even if I don't take it again, it's that same comment, right? that the, the cash value of the evidence grow. I don't know how to take and structure and repay the policy loans based on my existing set of policies. Like, how does it actually grow? I can't see that. I see the illustration, but I Well, know. let's go back to something. Uh, oh, you and need a coach. Basically, uh, do you drive an automobile? Yes. Well, how was it when you started out? The vehicle. How, when you started out driving an automobile, yes. uh, how did you feel? Yeah. Were you all that competent? Were you all that, uh, yeah. uh, okay, I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> you can't learn how to swim if you don't get in the water. <laughs> That's right. Now, yeah. yeah, a couple of the fact that uh, you can't keep one foot on the dock and one foot, foot in the boat, can you? That's right. <laughs> you got to decide which, which way you're going to go. you got to make a decision. <laughs> Well, is this a good way to go? Yeah. Well, that's what this is about. Uh, I don't know if that answered your question because it won't necessarily jail uh, or immediately. No more that guy on the bicycle there. Uh, he said uh, uh, all of a sudden it snapped. He was working on it for eight months uh, learning how to ride that bicycle. And then suddenly it snapped. It's similar to the same question that I had. So I, I understand your question. Yeah. And I got it answered. Did you answer? answered? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're we're running out of time, time, aren't we? Yeah, but it's been the same answer for eight years, though. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, okay, so okay, can we okay, okay, read something the from the book real quick? Oh, yes, read something out of my book. So, so this ties to a little bit. I haven't read it in a while. What you just <laughs> asked. So on, on page 48, it's uh -huh. in the second paragraph about halfway down. Okay. Uh, 
and halfway three quarters of the way down the second paragraph on page 48. When he builds a banking system through life insurance, makes loans to himself to buy automobiles or anything else or investments, whatever he's going to do, and pays back the policy or policies the same payment he would have he would have paid the banking system that he makes with the banking institution would have made off of him. Yes. And it's all done on a tax deferred basis. Mm -hmm. The interest he pays never leaves his account for control. Because right. it's premium. Because it's premium. If this is done consistently throughout his life, it will make a tremendous difference in his financial picture. Right. So yes. if he pays the loans back, can he access the money again? <clears throat> yes. If he puts the money into new premium, can he access the money again? Yes. If he pays the loan back and the loan is fully extinguished and he has more payments he hasn't finished doing yet because the car, he agreed to make six, 60 months of car payments and the loan's extinguished in month 48, does he have 12 more payments to make? If he's following the system, does that have to go back into a policy towards premium somewhere? Yes. If this one can't fit it, does he have to go get another one? Yes. Yeah. So all Nelson's trying to teach you here is that it doesn't, it don't be limited to one policy or how much you can fit in a policy if you build it to maximum. You're just going to have to get another one. Oh, well. <laughs> you got you to gotta sell another policy. Richard, you triggered something that I left out. It is so important. Thank you for that. You ready? I'm ready. Look, baby, Paige, you're just looking at that. Yep. All right. Mary's going to write a check for uh, each of the three kids. Uh, 500,000. 500,000. Man, what in the name of heaven are they going to do that money? You have to put it in the policy. Well, the policy won't hold them. They'll just have to get more. Now, David and Kim got some policy loans out there because they have never financed a car anywhere. Ever. All right. Now, look, uh, there's Kim and there's Dave. Uh, there's the four kids. They're all married. Well, how many cars is that? Good grief. <laughs> Would you rather give your they're money to all them? have been all financed. They have never seen a finance company uh, since they've been married. Because I started teaching this to them when they were first married. Mm -hmm. See, Mary Kim and uh, Dave got married out in Hawaii. And uh, first thing he had to do was buy a policy. Otherwise, no legal, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, did, he did say that. He, yeah, he, he said, he said the first thing Nelson did was make him so sign the, the application time, when the he met him. He said, look, 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 Okay. Well, uh, uh, that uh, remodeling, uh, reworking of the house, so well, they, yeah, yeah. they didn't know more kids. Yeah. It's know. totally done through policy loan. Well, uh, uh, they got a place to put uh, about oh, half, oh, a third of that $500. Well, they're going to do the rest of it. Got to get some policy. Oh, please don't tell me they're going to go put in the stock market. <laughs> no, no. Uh, how about that wonderful thing called real estate? That's going to get better every year, right? No matter what. <laughs> yeah. So what's the smartest thing that uh, uh, my three kids could do right now? See, but worse than that, God, I hate to admit this in front of y'all, but uh, my oldest daughter, uh, you got to understand, she's married to a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Now they, they bought a lot of life insurance, but they don't have any policy at all. What they come to with all that money? And then Mary graduates. What are they going to do with that? Well, what's the smartest thing they could do, please? Okay. Find it in the body. No. Yeah. Go out and buy a whole bunch of life insurance and pay on it about uh, four years or so forth and let the. Uh, uh, Dividends pay the show. premium offset policy alone. Yeah, premium offset. Uh, let uh, uh, loans pay the premium. That's going to create a debt. Well, when, that, uh, when I graduate, she graduates, that place dump that money in. Mm -hmm. All right. You now, back time. They don't teach this in home office. <laughs> See, back there years ago, uh, I bought a piece of property down on Highway 31 south of Birmingham. I knew that it was going to sell one of these days. It's going to be good. Now, uh, I bought a policy at that time. Uh, and uh, the, again, the purpose was to build up cash base like a bar and pay off snakes and dragons. Well, every time I had a uh, significant amount of money that to pay off snakes and dragons, I did. Well, I 
got dead in the policy now, but 13 years later, that property, property finally sold. Yeah. Well, in him a nice gob of money. Well, what did I do with it? I had a place to drop the whole cotton picking work. Now, do you know that's the same thing, uh, uh, Glenn, as buying a policy today back then in 13 years? Yeah, so people say, gosh, I wish I had done this 20 uh, years ago. Yeah, you can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to get people to think, don't we? Yeah. Oh, uh, how do you get them to think? That's why uh, education is so important, but uh, uh, they confuse education and indoctrination. No. They think that if you're going to get educated, you won't go back and get another degree. <clears throat> Something like that. No, that's not education. You get education out there just uh, going to just three or four websites that is superior. It don't cost you nothing. It don't cost you time to read. That's all. And uh, that's real stuff that uh, will stand the test of time. Whereas the stuff that you get in college is uh, there as from people who can't make a living if they had to do something else besides teach. <laughs> How are we doing time? Right, Nelson, I'm just letting you go. I know, <laughs> but I might go for seven or eight hours. <laughs> you don't like that. Yes, sir. What you got, Curtis? A question that I, I get from my clients a lot is, uh, and I make up an answer, I prefer to have your answer, is why has the, has the whole financial industry not embraced this? And I, like I said, I, I have an answer that I give to clients, but I, I'd like to hear yours. And well, I would, I would use the answer of the uh, the banker on the uh, the YouTube there. He told you, right? There's just a few of us, and if you knew that, you could put us out of business. Did you hear him say that? Yeah. Go back and listen to that thing over and over and see what he actually says. He gives you every clue that is necessary here to put uh, those folks in the proper place out of your life. Well, and would you would you say that it's also true that it's their arrogance, their belief that they can continue to deceive the masses? They don't need to have you eliminated because they actually believe that they're going to win more minds than you. Uh, again, the way that it's done is to make you think, uh, uh, make you think that they're giving you something, and they're not. It's impossible. That's why all those dang books are in there, and that's why Austrian economics has got to be understood. Uh, it's got to supplant the Keynesian uh, thought process. And again, uh, uh, if you can. Study uh, all those books that's on my website there. Uh, it's obvious what can be done. But uh, you can't do it with a mindset that prevails out there. It's got to be uh, furnished a little bit at a time. Uh, you know, start with something that's pretty simple, like uh, economics in one lesson. Start with the uh, richest man in Babylon, uh, things of that nature, I pencil, uh, so forth. Uh, we mentioned several of them here last uh, yesterday, uh, but uh, you can find your own way because uh, when it's coming from you, it's authentic. Uh, when it's coming from somewhere else, it's just uh, more conversation that could be classified to other people than noise. But if you've experienced it out there, that's a different animal altogether. That's why it's necessary for you to be uh, totally become uh, your own biker. But uh, you see, we have crazy things going on out there. Uh, uh, there's a person that I've known quite some time ago, uh, for, for some time now. Uh, he uh, recently made a $600,000 policy loan from uh, 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 his policies and put that money in a checking account in the bank. Can you believe that? Now, the idea of that guy being a financial advisor is the most frightening thing I can think of. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that happened. <laughs> hey, Nelson, can I add to that? 
Yeah. You know, so uh, to Curtis's point, there, it's like the, it's a consumer's mindset. So for yes. years, it's you know myths and beliefs about how, as a whole, the people have been taught to think. Right. So that's mainstream. Yes. And so it's really tough to get people's minds. Yes. Off they've been taught how to be prisoners. And and that's what we believe. They've been taught how to be prisoners, and uh, and they like it. Yeah. Uh, again, go back to uh, a book of well, building a warehouse of wealth. Out of Egypt and home to Babylon, from slavery to slavery. 400 years of slavery there, they got uh, totally acclimated to slavery. Now, when uh, Moses got them out and put them over in, uh, in uh, Asana, uh, they started bitching immediately. Well, it wasn't all that bad back over there in uh, Egypt. We got to go back. Well, what has changed over these thousands of years? <laughs> Learning how to be free people is a painful experience, but uh, so rewarding and fun. <laughs> Nothing touches you. Uh, why are people attracted to something that won't work? See, when I put those four quotations up there the first time, uh, remember what. Uh, uh, H.L. Mencken had to say, uh, yeah, yeah, people just, yeah, no, this is the one about, uh, they, uh, uh, you tell them the truth, they put you down and think you're a scoundrel or something like that. They love darkness more. Okay, back to the Bible again. Men love darkness more than they do light. They believe in things that. Uh, don't exist. Well, uh, the problem is getting the nonsense out of the people's minds. And again, they got to understand that uh, free market uh, contracts with other free people is the only way to go. See, there's no coercion in re required here. No. See, that's the hallmark of the state. Somebody gets some crazy idea and they got to force it on other people out there and so forth. Well, let me tell you something else that, uh, that, that might hurt a little bit. Uh, getting the life insurance business when I did, uh, and if you did, if you know a member of life underwriters, you, you, no, you know a member of the club. Yeah. You've got to join life underwriters. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, now, once you join it, uh, like <coughs> open, you can become president, right? You. Uh, you go through the chairs to get to be president. Yeah. Your first job is program chairman. Yes. Well, uh, I've got the uh, a guy from the home office of uh, Life Under I was in Washington. He was very candid in what he said. He says every eighth grade civic class uh, member knows that uh, there are three branches of government in the federal system of the USA: legislative, executive, judicial. He says, after a while, he might learn that the bigger branch that's much more powerful, the bureaucracy. Yes. Yeah. 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 They create, uh, what am I They create regulations that are really uh, acted, treated as laws. It did not come from uh, congressmen so forth. But then he says, after a while, if he hangs around and thinks it up, he might find out there's a fifth branch of government that's bigger and more powerful than that. Lobbyists. 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 Now who well who controls the lobbyists? Go ahead and tell me. Business. Banks. Yeah, but banks. Yeah. Yeah. I rest the case. Now I went through the chairs after my partner, Lamar Phillips, went, he went through the chairs first. Now, he goes on to be uh, a uh, part of the state, uh, off the state uh, level of life under right. He goes to Mount, down to Montgomery and uh, comes back from meeting and he is just totally white as a sheep. You won't believe what happened at that meeting today. Tell me. The entire meeting was about how membership in Life Underwriters was, was going down. We're losing 
members. Are you ready for the solution? We got to create a problem. We got to create a problem. Did you hear that? We got to frighten members into joining life underwriters. If you don't join life underwriters here, do you realize what Congress is getting ready to do? They're going to tax the inside and build up the cash phase of life insurance. That didn't come from the general public and so forth. That didn't come from uh, uh, the government or anything like that. It came from you know where I just I, I illustrated. Well, that's a shortcut out there that uh, people are trying to frighten people and do these things. And they could have spent that time on teaching people what we're teaching here. And uh, that becomes a totally new point. That's why, folks, you got to understand the characters in the play and you understand who's doing what to whom and so forth. And realize that the freedom out there is to solve the button function. It can be done and it is being done. And uh, you guys are the uh, folks that uh, get all this done because you're the coaches. You're out there where the rubber meets the road. You're out there in the minds of the people that is going to uh, want to get out of slavery. So, all right, now what am I supposed to do? Where'd you go? <laughs> you went outside. You just went out. That means you got time for one more question. Oh, which one is that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Anybody got a question? Yes, Tom? No. Do you have a question? Oh, I have a question. Oh, picture, picture. <laughs> okay. I got a question. Nelson. Yes, sir. What's the question? So, you mentioned a couple of times in your uh, discussion over the last couple of days about the Edward Life Insurance Company. Yeah. We tried to get them to believe in this concept. I spent five years. Why didn't? Why? Uh, Mel Watt, Harvard MBA thinking. Okay. Uh, there's something that you don't educate a lawyer. You don't educate a Harvard MBA. Yeah. Arrival syndrome. Mm -hmm. Who are you? You talk to me about this. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, my mentor was Leonard Reed. And back there, when Leonard first started out to create the Foundation for Economic Education, uh, do you believe that uh, uh, Leonard Reed had a uh, an office in uh, Equitable's building, uh, gratis, uh, compliments of, uh, oh, I can't think of the president of the company at that particular time. He was a really great guy. All right, but uh, then along comes this Harvard MBA bunch that uh, think they know everything, that is made a monkey out of the entire world. So, you know, they're totally in love with the Keynesian thought. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what's happened. And so, uh, years uh, I've come along and uh, I'm talking to uh, uh, some of the higher up there with Equitable in New York. and. Uh, singing the praises of the Foundation of Economic Education, and uh, uh, I got absolutely nowhere. Thank you. Well, that Well, see, like, their thoughts is, they're the first to demutualize. <laughs> Again, they're the, the ones who created uh, the, um, shucks. Boop, 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 life insurance. Absurd, absurd idea. Uh, that's top down thinking that just won't hold water at all. And they're the ones that created variable life. That was the baby of John Carter and Jim Atwood. Uh, I knew John very well, but uh, uh, here's a, a meeting over in Atlanta after I've been working on this for quite some time. And uh, there was over 500 people there and 400 on the real estate business. You got, you got to diversify. And John Carter is up there talking about how uh, oh, we, in, we invite, uh, what's the word? Innovation. Q&A, let's just talk. John, I've been trying to get this innovation across for quite some time. Yeah. 
then I would shout it down. Yeah. Yeah. In essence, go home. Who are you? So I saw that they're totally unteachable. I'm very slow learner to be five years to see that they were unteachable. So in the next book, I think there should be a chapter on buying that airplane. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I have to pass the physical in quite some time because I got fed up with, okay, with my background of uh, art, uh, quite bypass. By the time that you uh, had the exam to the time that the FAA uh, finally got around to saying, okay, now you can fly, it was only 90 days. Well, I, gosh, I, during all that time after my bypass, I had another pilot with me anyway, so I said, shoot, I'm going to go through that. <laughs> I just ride with them and take for the <laughs> succeed again. <laughs> uh, but thank you for the thought. Now, uh, we'd love to see you in Birmingham next February. Here, here. Yeah. 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 He'll be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we uh, invite the uh, home office folks, uh, other folks, it's members only. Awesome. Yeah. Let's give Nelson a big round. Thanks to the tango. If you don't.